Number 56, letter A. Seismographs measure the arrival times of earthquakes with a precision of 0.1 seconds. To get the distance to the epicenter of the quake, they compare arrival times of S&P waves. They travel at different speeds. S&P waves travel at 4 and 7.2 kilometers per second, respectively. And the region considered, uh, excuse me, in the region considered, how precisely can the distance to the source of the earthquake be determined? All right, so we have two waves. They're both going to propagate at different speeds. Now, let's try to do it this way. Let's assume that you're going to measure, let's say that the um, that the earthquake here, in, in reality, okay, occurs, uh, or we feel the earthquake occur at, let's say, this particular location. And the earthquake originates over here, right? Either one of these two stars. They're going to be at the same, uh, in the same vertical arrangement. The distance between these two points, let's assume it's going to be exactly 7.20 kilometers. That's the actual distance, okay? However, though, when this P wave, when it propagates, right, it's going to be measured by the seismograph that we'll assume is at this location. And the seismograph has a precision, or it's going to measure it with a precision of 0.1 seconds. What that means is that Basically, the seismograph can be off by 0.1 seconds in either direction. Now, we know that it should take, if, if I chose this point to be 7.2 kilometers away, actually, I don't know why I put kilometers per second, but if I assume that this point is 7.2 kilometers away and this wave is traveling at exactly 7.2 kilometers per second, then I know that the actual time that it should take to, for that wave to get to this point is actually one second, right? The actual time is going to be one second. Okay, for the P wave. However, though, the seismograph might measure this. Act the uh, measured time could be either 1.1 seconds or it could be 0 0.9 seconds. Right? It could be either in either direction it can be off. All right? So now, uh, basically what we can do, uh, given this information, is I can find now the uh, uncertainty in this particular measurement in terms of distance. Okay? So remember, uncertainty is not going to be measured over the whole uh, interval here from 0.9 to 1.1. It's measured from the true time of one second to one of the extremes, either 1.1 or 0.9. We're going to basically arrive at the same stuff. So what I want to do here is then I'm going to now use my formula. Velocity is equal to distance over time. And I know that the time will be off by 0.1 seconds, right? So 7.2 kilometers uh, per second. That's going to be equal to what distance is it off by divided by the time it can be off by. And it can be off by 0.1 seconds as it told us in the problem, basically. So when I do this multiplication, I realize that the distance that it can be off, right, it could be uh, 0 0.72 meter, uh, kilometers, okay? Now, this is the distance that it can be off by, plus or minus, right, because it could be either way, right? Either it'll be estimated a little more, a little less, depending upon how the time is clocked. What I can now do is basically find the uncertainty in this particular measurement for the P wave. So the uncertainty, I'll just label it as U sub P, the uncertainty in the P wave will be the uh, amount that it's off by, or the distance that it can be off by, plus or minus divided by the actual amount times 100. So the uncertainty in the P wave is going to be now uh, 0 0.72, all divided by, let me just erase this stuff so it doesn't get too bogged down. Uh, over the actual 7.2 times 100. So we realize now that the uncertainty in the P wave is going to be uh, in terms of its distance, right? Because the distances will cancel, therefore it's now unitless. And that would be equal to now a value of basically 0.1, right? So we'll take, we'll take actually, yeah, 0.1. So 0.72 divided by 7.2 and then multiply by 100. So 10%, but 0.1, actually, you know what I should do? So let me let me do it. Let me leave it as percent, ten percent. But you know that this can be also equivalent to zero point one, right, in terms of the decimal. All right. Now what I'm going to do is do the same thing for the S wave. Okay. Find the uncertainty in the S wave. How long would the actual time it take if we had the perfect measurement device? How long would it take for this S wave to get all the way seven point two kilometers down the down the uh, page here? Well, it would again. We could use velocity is equal to distance over time. The velocity is now four kilometers per second. We know the distance is going to be 7.2 kilometers, and now I'm asking for the time. So let's calculate that. So basically, it's going to be 7.2 divided by 4, and that's about 1.8. So this is the actual amount of time, actual, actual time that 
the that wave, the P wave, excuse me, the S wave should arrive at this particular location. All right, it's 1.8 seconds, right? I don't know what ACT, what, what is that? Not really sure. I meant to write seconds. Um, so now, though, remember, the machine might not record this. It might record a little more, right? 0.1 second more or 0.1 second less, right? So why don't I, actually, I didn't even really need this, but why don't I now calculate that? I realized I didn't need it. So let me just go back. I could have done the same thing here. The V is equal to D over T. And realize that the velocity of this S wave now is 4 kilometers per second. The distance is 7.2. And the time it's going to be off by is 0.1. Right? Or actually, excuse me. The time it's going to be off by is 0.1. So solve for the D now. This is the time. This is the distance it's going to be off by for the S wave. So it's just going to be 0 0.4. Right? 0 0.4. Now what we have to do is then find the uncertainty in the S wave. So again, that's the amount that it's off by, or 0 0.4 kilometers, divided by the actual length of the distance here is 7.2. Right, you can multiply that by 100 if you like. So the uncertainty in the S wave is going to be 0.4 divided by 7.2. And then you can multiply that by 100. So this works out to be about 5, 5.5 5 repeating percent. Right, so it's a little more certain, right? This was 10% uncertain, this is 5%. Why is that the case? Well, this thing's moving slower, right? We should be able to estimate it a little more accurately. So in terms of a decimal then, it's going to be about 0 0.055 repeating. Okay, now you have to remember that the total uncertainty in a measurement is going to be the uncertainties of all the individual pieces summed together. So what that means now is the total uncertainty, oops, so the total uncertainty, so I'll say u sub t is going to be the uncertainty measured for the P wave plus the uncertainty measured for the S wave. So the total uncertainty here will be equal to 0 0.155, right, repeating, all right? So this is the total uncertainty now for the uh, measurement. Okay, now what do we do from here, right? And this would be about, and this is in decimal form, this would be equivalent to about 15.5 repeating percent. That's the uncertainty. So what, what do we do now? How do we take this uncertainty and translate it into then an actual amount of distance that we're uncertain of. Well, now all we have to do is this is the actual distance. All I now have to do is take 15% of this value because that, that's 15% of what? Well, 15% of this value I'm uncertain by, right? So basically now all I now need to do is going to be to take the uh, 7.2 kilometers, multiply it then by 0 0.155 repeating. Let's see what we get. 7.2 times 1 point, oh, excuse me, 0.155555, and it comes out to be about 1.12, 1.12 kilometers. So that's the amount that we're going to be uncertain by, all right? So, and then what's part B saying? Something about nuclear bombs can be located, and uh, yeah, I mean, if, if, we can, if we can estimate it with uh, this amount of precision, then... Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we can. Uh, I'm sure we're able to then uh, estimate the uh, actual amount of, uh, or the actual location, I should say, um, about that uh, nuclear bomb. The only thing is, though, remember here. So this is the uncertainty. Um, we would, you would also now what what you can find is you can find out how does the uncertainty change as the distance changes. All right. Consider that a problem for yourself. See if change the value. Do the calculation the same way. See how it comes out. All right? So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Please remember to subscribe. See you soon.